we're back. All right, welcome to the weigh-in. Uh, we've just got Tyrone here playing with his gadgets, trying to get the, the video up and running. He's got his little bedroom light that he's bought. Uh, he's bought a selfie light. Anyway, we'll talk about that in a minute, but we've got, <laughs> we've got a guest. Uh, so we've got Jake Rotham uh, from Onboard Agencies, uh, Salty Crew rep. Uh, the guys that have been stocking the shop. Also brother of uh, the star West Coast Eagles player, my old teammate, Josh Rotham. So, um, welcome, mate. Thanks for having me, boys. I feel like a bit of an imposter on here with my level of fishing, but... <laughs> yeah, you're new to fishing, eh? Yeah. Relatively yeah, new. Not, kind of. I guess your caliper of fishing, for sure. Like, grew up fishing um, kind of just once a year at Moore River with the old boy and... Um, just chasing brim and stuff or offshore yeah or? just just like little brim and trumpeter and my first fish there was actually a whiting really sick, yeah yeah just a little sandy in the in the river mouth there but um i always loved it like going back to more river every year was sick it was so much fun like i'd just be fishing all day like everyone would be in the caravan park hanging out and yeah I'd just be fishing but recently just kind of got back into it my my granddad's like a bit of a gun fisherman from way back like fishes with the old like glass uh, surf rods and alby reels One and pieces of side yeah. cast. Yeah, like going in his shed's pretty rad. But yeah, watch seeing some of the fish that he used to catch back in the day. It's like fucking mental. Is he a more river local? What was, nah, he, nah, where was he, he fishing from? So he's from England, but... Um, Carp fisherman. Yeah, I don't know, man. I, I don't even... <laughs> did a little I need to, <laughs> I need to pick him? his brain a little bit. But um, his best mate and his next door neighbour is like... I think he's the one that got him into it. So yeah. he's he's actually like uh, got the record for dry casting in WA. Yeah, he's got right. Like a two hundred and ten meter cast really? or something. Really, or overhead. Yeah, we got a customer that we actually is in the Australian surf casting club that they go to. Yeah, the thing. Yeah, well, that's what Chaz Regan. He's um, they're all older guys. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's yeah. That's like the the thing they do. It's like massive. It's huge. They're like different types of line, and they try and get. They like strip their reels and they rebuild them with different bearings, trying to like make it spin better. Yeah, man. Yeah. They get so into it, these guys. I don't know. I feel like some of the casts I've done off the beach would have to uh, nudge the record. <laughs> I don't know. Don't you reckon when you go beach yeah, fishing? When you do, you always, <laughs> and you get the big run up, and you just get that one of those pink casts, and you sort of look around at everyone. It's like, oh, yeah, that was that, that was <laughs> that was three hundred meters. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I wonder yeah, if there's yeah, any Taylor always, at Rotto. You know, but <laughs> it's like it's like catching a fish though. Like you can, I don't know. Like like catch a say fifty centimeter tail, you always put a couple of extra. Oh, I never do that. Round it up. Speaking of fish as well, the 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 man himself, the man, the myth, was out there today. Finally caught a fish. He got his target species. Did, have you seen the the video of of Pablo? I saw a clip. I had a pretty busy day today, so I kind of just saw it real quick. Yeah, I thought I we'd be talking about it tonight. So. I pretended I had a busy day when I saw it. I just quickly turned <laughs> yeah. the phone off. But he was, Donk on it was pretty good. Well, and the caption was a play on Mark from yesterday because he was giving me shit yesterday when he knew that I couldn't do anything because I had the kids. Yeah, so. I had a good day yesterday. But um, yeah, we... Uh, anyway, like you know how they say that um, some like people's pets look like their owner. Well, this fish looked like the bloke that caught it. I reckon. <laughs> <laughs> what do you mean, mate? <laughs> the big hump head. It had the big, <laughs> yeah, big nose on it. It was a. Uh, it was a. No, nah, it was a. Uh, no, nah, actually, I'm just packing the piss here. But it was a belter of a fish. It was. Um, I was. I was. Yeah, pretty jealous when I saw Got it. The whole thing on camera too, which was good. Yep. So there were a few sambos as well. Like six, I think, all up. Six yeah, ambos. You're, you're yeah. saying they were fighting over the lure, eh? Yeah, so like I actually hooked I hooked another. I thought it was a pinky and it's on camera. Like I had it up, coming up to the ski and I was bringing it up and I was like on camera like, oh fuck, it's another pink. And then there was a sambo next to it. And I was like, oh, there's a sambo there too. I couldn't quite see properly. And it looked like, first I thought it was two pinks and it was a pink and a sambo. And I had the sambo. I thought I had the pink and this pinky smashing the plastic out of the Sambo's mouth. You're kidding. Like, I, yeah. I, 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 if I had a stick, I could have put it underwater and got it. It was cool. Those like are the, the sessions you live for. Yeah, right? the pinky was marginally smaller than that one. Yeah. So maybe it was fighting for food, but it was like oh, smashing the plastic. That you got the Sambo. Yeah, I got the Sambo. Yeah, after that, I couldn't get another pinky. Every single drop, it was a Sambo. I had was, one that towed the ski bit. Was the sounder lit up? Nah, that was the thing. Because I, was, yeah, right. I wasn't on anchor, so I was drifting because I didn't hook up the anchor clip so I was like it was calm enough so I just like charmed 
on one mark, like I said, a mark where I set your arm. Yep. And I just went up the drift and then reset the plastic each drift and just fished that plastic, same plastic on the on the chum. It was sick. It was good. You know how you were saying that you put a bit of mayo on them? Mm. So it's, this podcast is called The Way In. So we've got the fish in the freezer. So yeah, we're going to weigh it. <laughs> I want to weigh it, but I want to I want to see oh, some right. estimates before we weigh it. So well, we've all seen the fish. Are you good at Are you good at calling weights? Nah. Go, nah. go maybe go get the fish and quickly. Yeah, I'll go. I'll, I'll, I'll be all right for length, but maybe not. Yeah, maybe we'll do length weight. as well. That's actually a great a great call. So how, how many have you caught? Many snapper? No, nah, I caught just little ones. Eh? Yeah. Just little ones. In short, off the, the off the rock walls. The, the oh, latest right. one I got in the boat. Was actually the only one I got in the boat ever. Was um, was like just size, so yeah, haven't really caught too many pinks. But that's actually a species that I want to target land based pretty heavily this yeah, year. Yeah, well, like that's one of my goals to get like a like a good fish. You um, the rocks, so the guys with the drones have been cleaning up. Have, yeah, are you ever are you interested a, in drone fishing? I or am, not? but it's just such an investment. Like, yeah, you've it got to is. Buy like a pretty hefty drone to do it, and also like I'm in mean, photography, so. If I'm going to buy a drone, I want to buy... You can't I use two months. birds with one stone, and I don't want to really drown a good yeah, DJI right. drone or whatever, but... What's the go with insurance with those things? I don't know. I haven't looked into it. I don't insure any of my photography gear. Hopefully no one listening to this knows yeah. where I live, because I'll be fucked. <laughs> but, um, so what sort of photography are you doing at the moment? So surf and skate's sort of my background. That's what I grew up doing, just down the beach all the time. <laughs> Here. <laughs> yeah, get back to that. Yeah. Here he is. So you've bled it. I've bled it, but I haven't gutted it. Oh, does freezing it add weight to it or not? Well, if you've got a kilo of water and you freeze a kilo of water, it's still going to weigh a kilo, isn't it? So, so I'm going to say no. <laughs> How many sinkers did you put in the stomach? Yeah. <laughs> None. So the so what, do you reckon, what do you reckon it weighs? I reckon that'll be. Can we feel it? Can we feel the weight? You want to feel me? Yeah. Oh no, because they're the. Uh, can't you can't right. grab that button because that's the scales. I haven't looked at them either, by the yeah, way. Yeah, right. I reckon what do you reckon? 10, 11, I reckon. Well, pounds? Or? <laughs> yeah, it's got to be pounds. Oh, man. I think we got some gloves. No, you can touch that. Oh, my. I don't want to get dirty. Nah, You're man. fiddling it for me after this. Yeah, right. Oh, mate, it's not a bad fish. Like, like you can can actually, like, does this look at this, look at this. He's left the fucking. No, I just put it in there and I haven't looked at it. Does this GoPro have No, but you've left that on there so it feels heavier. Yeah. Nah, that's oh, like weighs like yeah. half a kilo. What do we got here? What scales are we running? Some scales. Alright. Some quality scales. They are. I'm putting I on want you to, count. I want you to give me your number first. It's gonna be five. Five? Fuck yeah. off way off then. Yeah, you wanna have a go another go? Nah, it's alright. Go that will just show how I'm Whoever's closest. I'm going to go 5.5. 5. 5. <laughs> so you disagree with me? I was going to go 5.5 5 initially. <laughs> All right. well, these, aren't, these aren't digital, so we're going to give it a go. Oh, man, we need some... Whose is this? Is this your jumper? It's my shirt. I'm going to just rub the... Uh, <laughs> yeah, you can wash that. It's your rag. All right, so we got... It's just under five. Oh, fuck. I'm it's under five. Off. Just under five. Oh, so that right. gives you an idea on how big fish are. Oh, it's a five on the money. Hang on, give it to you. Give us a go at you. I was so off. <laughs> Mate, that's 5.5.2. 5. So I'm closest without going... I'm closest. Hang on. So I win this. Hang on, hang on. <laughs> He's trying to like jiggle it. Like... <laughs> that's 5.5. 5. <laughs> Look. You just jiggle it. <laughs> <laughs> it's over five. What do we got? All right, the guest is... Keep jiggling it, it'll be six. Guest, well, it's, otherwise, it's, it's tight and it sticks. So... This is pounds? No, Let's that's go. kilos. Kilos. It's over yeah, okay. five, eh? Just over five. Just over, so... Well, you know, if, if I bring a that. fish in here and I'm claiming ten, you know it's... <laughs> ten five. pounds, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Ten Double pounds, it? you're spot on. Ten what about... Measure it while you're up there. Whack it on, eh? So, five... Just over five kilos. It's not a bad pinky. They, um... I reckon... I don't know. They... They always do look a bit bigger, the big pinkies, because they got a, They're quite thick in that, but... Five kilos... Uh, I mean, it just goes to show how much people yeah, we do overestimate. Last week, like yeah. all these crew saying they catch twenty kilo jewies, like that's a massive fish. It's it's a rare event, someone catching a twenty kilo jewy, and mm. everyone catches twenty kilo jewies. Yeah, if you go off there, then without weighing it, and I reckon I reckon more so, everyone catches fifteen kilo jewies. 
So it's so many times I reckon you see people catch an eight kilo dewy and they just say, ah, oh, it's a 15 kilo fish and you actually weigh them mm. and they don't pull the scales down that hard, eh? No. So have you caught many dewies before? A couple. Yeah. And for me, boat fishing is like, I'm stoked if I can get out on a boat fishing. My old man owns the sickest boat. Yeah. And he's just, I don't know, like he, li- he likes fishing, but I don't think he's got the patience for it. I don't know. Every time he chats to you, I think it pumps him up a little bit. I'd like to go get out fishing. But. Technically, that snap is a tiddler. Five kilos. Like, it's got a good head on it with the honky nose and the and the bump. But the it was only 70 closure. centimetres. Yeah. Well, oh, I was going to guess it. Um, you would have guessed 70 anyway. That's yeah, 70 guess. centimetres, 5.5 five, 5 kilo five, fish. 5 kilo fish. <laughs> That's not a bad effort from the ski. So It was like literally first like first drop on the money. What were you using? Z-Man Plastics. Yeah. In... Um, Seven inch. Seven inch. With a TT jig head. Yep. Like a seven o uh, quarter ounce, I think it was. But yeah, all the footage will be up on YouTube, so I'm going to get a video done out of it and chuck it up. It was pretty fun. It was a good, good little morning for work. Yep. If yeah. you, if you, if someone like me was to come in and go, okay, how do you, how do you go about targeting an inshore pink? How would you go about it? Like, what, like, are you look, what kind of ground are you looking for? Yeah. You just, you want to be on the back edge, same as like when you're cray fishing. Yeah. So you want to be on that back edge, like that 17, where it goes from like 10 to, or eight to 17 meters. And you, the key with, which is why good I didn't anchor today. The key with fishing for snapper um, on anchor and burling is you want your wind and your current the same way. Because you want your back of your boat to face where your burly's going. Because if your burly is going towards your anchor and you're casting at the back of the boat, you're kind of defeating the purpose. And today, my drift was opposite to the current. And I actually said in the video, I was putting burly in the water. So it was hard work. Yeah, and if I was on anchor, I wouldn't have got a fish. Like, I was putting burly in the water and I was drifting this way. And um, and the burly was like going with me. Like, was going the other way. Like, yeah, completely. Right, like, yeah, just bur- and it was burning up. Like, you should have seen it. Like, it, it was... It wasn't even sinking. It was going that quick. Mm. If I would, if you were going to target inshore snapper, I would just say mm. one of the main things I reckon is um, conditions. So, like a lot of people, you'll drive around some of the inshore lumps, and you'll on a clear day you'll go, oh, "That's just an inshore lump. Like might have craze or something, but it would never hold any fish." And it might be four or five meters of water. Even the lumps just off the rock walls and stuff like that. Yeah. But if you go back there after a big nor'wester with a huge swell. That brings a snapper in, and they yeah, feed they off all the all the. That's when stuff the boys that's... are catching them off the. If you see, yeah, the if you see, because the surge is pushing all the bait and all the bits of the crabs and all that stuff out of the rocks and yeah, out of the reef. So clear, even if there has been a swell and it's clear water, like you, you're more than likely not going to get any fish. But if you get a nice big swell and the water is just filthy, just milky. That's when the rain. inshore yeah. snapper go off. The, so the, the, even, like, you see a big bit of rain, the, the rock walls are full with those guys that are fishing. Inshore, the first glassy day, if you've got a boat, the first glassy day that you get after a storm, but early morning daybreak as the sun's coming up is like the best day to that's go fishing. Have a bait in the water. Yeah, so that's always been my theory with inshore snapper. It's, 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 you really, you, like m- when it's clear and you see all those lumps, mark them all because yeah. you go back there. Yeah, and you after, fish them. Like, you, like I said, you'll think. I never would there ever be any good fish on that lump, mm. but you'd be surprised, mate. Those snapper just come cruising through, mull away, all those species will come through. Yeah. Even Jewies, you know, you'll get the odd... Take another beer. You'll get the odd um, inshore... Cheers, bro. Inshore fish like that, um, sambos, all that sort of stuff. So dirty water, big nor'westers and big swells, I reckon, is See, This, this is the info I need to give my old man. See, like, this is the motivation he needs to Well, to he get never out. wants to talk fishing when he comes in a year old man. Oh, he's working, though. You gotta give him that, but... The first time I met Jake was probably... And I didn't even know you worked for Salty Crew. You'd introduce yourself. Because, <laughs> um... I don't like to name drop, mate. I don't like to... Yeah, it's the worst. I but you, you were chasing a new combo. Mm. You sold me that, um, Dreamcast. Mm. And your missus is listening to this podcast. Can I talk about how much it was? Yeah, I should be fine. <laughs> <laughs> oh, mate, we don't even live together. It's all good. <laughs> Yeah, so no, it was, and you didn't want to spend too much money. I remember that. You're like, oh, I'm just getting into it. I didn't want to spend too much. And we well, set up with a sick combo. It was a like, sick combo, I'd too. I've been fishing for a while, but like up until last year, man, or even the year before, I thought the lures were a fucking myth. Like I'd tried a few times and I just didn't have the patience and was just kind of like lucking out every time. 
I just got sick of going home and my old boy and my brothers just giving me a hard time because I wasn't coming home with any fish. <laughs> <laughs> but I just, yeah, I, I don't know, with the whole COVID thing, man, like I couldn't couldn't go to the gym and do, do the boxing thing and I couldn't, you know, there was so much shit you couldn't do. So it was good, just a good time to actually give it a good crack and like focus more energy on fishing. And, but what, I haven't really stopped. What lure um, would be your pick of your lures now? Like what, what soldier? Yeah, what was your first fish caught on lure-wise? A like, Jackson muscle shot. In Jackson Lua. Yeah. There you go. Yeah. So I don't even know how I ended up with that thing. I've had it for a while. There's a few places like a, to sell Jacksons. Yeah, it was we like don't a do mother Jackson colour. Here, but yeah, yep. Um, I noticed you buy a lot of that same colour Lua now. Yeah, I've got like, a few of them. I don't like that I don't sort know, of mullaby silvery with the red. Yeah, we're just going natural. Like, that's yeah. always kind of what's worked, unless it's been like a GT ice cream where it's just a crazy colour and it's worked on the top. Yeah, they do work too. People tell me they look at GT ice creams and they're like. How does that catch a fish? Yeah, well, Finn got me onto the GT ice cream. Yeah. First, like, I think it was the first... I won't give away my spot, but it was like... It wasn't far no, from No, no, give away your spot. <laughs> yeah, well, that's why we got you on here. <laughs> it, <laughs> it wasn't far, it wasn't we far were just, from here, and that thing got lit up. Like, that's probably one of the best sessions I've had, just on a green, like, translucent GT that, ice cream. And that green is literally a least selling colour. Yeah, right. Oh, well, there you go. Nobody buys that shade green, but it's like... For me, green is herring. Yeah, okay. Like when you catch a herring and they're in the water, they are like that sort of dull green yeah, like sort of color. Greeny gray. Greeny gray. And that shad green um, GT ice cream is kind of that color. So mm. green for Taylor is one of my go tos. Yeah. But I, I was using those two lures like after. Like I got my PB the first time I ever. I haven't beat it yet. Like I got a 62 the first time I went. And that was local too. That was Metro. That's a good fish. Yeah, 62 I was, Metro. I was stoked, man. I was stoked. I couldn't let go because like the tr- the rear treble had come around and nicked it. Did you eat it? And fucked it. I used it for bait. I don't know. If oh, I that's was, okay. That's uh, frowned upon. But yeah. Did you catch anything on the bait? Nah. That was that was Mully bait. That's another one I'm wa- I'm wanting to tick off the list. These guys hate Mully fishing. Yeah, well, I have caught a few Mully away. Um, Needs to be from the beach though. Yeah, beach oh, no, beach Mully away. No, they, they don't really yeah. count from the boat. No, I agree. Even I've caught it from the boat. Guy. Yeah, Cedar has got their music, oh, Franklin. Next door, yeah, if you hear the music, that's next door. <laughs> Blame uh, David Donald. Going home as well. Cheers, Dave. Yeah, <laughs> yeah cheers. Mate. Yeah. Uh, it'd be all right if we weren't doing a podcast. But, um, <laughs> yeah, mate, Mulloway. So uh, actually, we spoke um, recently. Can you <laughs> can you give us your um, Wago Mulloway oh, Mulloway fuck. story? Um, because if you can't catch a fish at Wago, if you can't, <laughs> if you can't <laughs> catch a fish a Mulloway at Wago, it's going to be a long, hard journey. Yeah, so I, I bought a Forby. I've had a van for the last four years. Company so car. you can put clothes racks in the other. Yeah, yeah, just being a sales rep. And um, I saved a bit of my money and bought, bought a Prado, bought a 90. I thought, fuck yeah, I'm going to do a big, you know, my first like proper trip. So I went away for four days up to Wago. Um, hadn't been there before, didn't really know much about it, but drove around a bit, like drove all the way up to the cliffs and then all the way back down to like the south end of Lucky Bay and found like, saw a couple of other guys fishing down the beach and found this little, <laughs> for anyone that hasn't been there, it's kind of flat like Wedge or Lano would be and then it kind of just drops off and you have like a couple of little bit of bits of flat reef there. And there were a couple of fellas fishing 200 meters or so down the down the beach the night before and i thought okay i'm gonna that's the area i'm gonna fish in the morning so i got up but you early. said to us that you looked on google earth and like you put some serious yeah research i did into yeah this. like i fully that that preparation beats you know prevents piss poor performance so it's not like you just so rocked I, up I, this I, place and said that's where i'm gonna fish no no like you put I, a bit I, of time I, into yeah, this yeah 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 and that and helps um, with the story by the way so i'm just like yeah thanks, thanks. <laughs> um I've forgotten the story. How's it I, going? I picked my, <laughs> I picked my, picked my rock, had fresh bait. Like I went down to a, a spot where I know I can get bait. So what time did you wake up in the morning? Fucking like 4 a.m. Dark, packed up all our shit, got there. Like, prepped my bait, <laughs> bait cotton, everything. Did everything I could have done to get a good mullet. And I've pinged this bait out. First one went in good couple of taps, I thought, fuck yeah, I'm on here. Like, I think there's some good fish out there. Next cast, I had a small mullet in my in my bait bag. So it was about that big, just a 
little yellow eyed mullet and I thought fuck I'll, I'll ping that out if that doesn't get eaten I don't the know whole what mullet. I'm doing yeah I don't know what I'm doing what size that. sinker did you have five ounce yep and I tried to ping it and I just heard it <laughs> crack and my it's an assassin beach mask it's, it's not exactly a cheap rod and it's just snapped right in half there's like you got the light the though. guys down like 100 meters from me looked at me like they heard oh, they, when they break they go off <laughs> yeah like it was loud it was loud anyway I'm and assassins what was assassins louder, don't break what was louder the snap of the rod or the curse that came <laughs> out of mate, right I now? did not you didn't hear a peep out of me oh, no, I was so, so broken <laughs> like I was just a defeated man at that point <laughs> <laughs> So I get it, and I, I don't even think I told you guys this too. So my mate Andy, he doesn't fish. He came with me. He doesn't fish at all. He's got this shitty Shimano thing he must have bought from the fucking one of the major shops or something. He, I go, mate, you need to get out there. Like I think there's fish. So loaded him up with a fillet. Sinker wasn't even that heavy. Did you overload his rod too? He, he overloaded his rod. So two rods in a row snapped. He snapped his rod. He snapped oh, his rod mate, too. I didn't know that. I've got a spare that's like. I used for ping and lures at salmon. That wasn't enough to put a big bait out. Yeah, like a yeah. Big sinker to set, you know, set a bait. Not unless you want to break it. So we're, I just threw in the towel. I actually ended up driving home that afternoon with two days left on the trip. It's just like <laughs> fuck this, I'm going home. As I'm packing up, I see this old dude kind of putt over to my spot that I was not my spot, but the spot I was fishing. The, way, and the spot you woke up at four a.m. Yep. Researched on Google, uh, yep. like put all the groundwork in. It's this old fella, he's got star sinker and a mule, like on a paternoster simple rig like doesn't even look like he put in any effort he pings out a muley his rod tip just goes boom 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 I'm like fuck that's a mully like I've heard about all these head shakes and stuff that they give and fuck he pulled in a mully that was like probably 1.2 1.3 <laughs> on his first cast exactly in where I was the hole you were fishing. yeah, yeah. And, fuck if I had Andy here my mate that was with me like he'd be telling you you know, I wasn't a happy man that Did day. Did you talk at all on the way home? Yeah, but fuck, I wouldn't have been too too pleasant to be in that car ride with. I don't reckon. <laughs> what were you? What was your? What were your feelings when this old dude's just putting over and just going, "Oh, that looks." I just thought, "Fuck, I'm quitting fishing. I'm, 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 done. I'm, like, I'm not put on this. I'm not put on this planet to fish." Oh, man, it, it seriously defeated me, but but. I don't know. That's part of it. Yeah, it. that is fishing, and like you know, I've persisted through so many sessions like that where it just hasn't gone my but, way. And, and like, it happens. I like, think that happens to everyone too. I've got like, customers. I, have, I haven't had me. anyone that's taught me how to fish too. Nah. So like my whole experience with fishing has been trial and error and fucking YouTube. Mate, it's gonna yeah. make that that mully that you get that much better yeah. as well. Yeah. Unless um, it's a small one. I'm going but. hard. I'm not giving up. Like I was good. We should have made a mark spot in Savannies. I don't have a spot in Savannah's. I've only got spots in out Lando. of Savannah's. <laughs> <laughs> There's no other way in Savannah's. I don't know what you're talking about. No one your good mate is Scotty, eh? Up in Savannah's. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, nah, there's a good I've little crew I've known Scotty since I was a little kid. Oh, yeah, because he was around. Family. Yeah, Scotty Watson. So he was... Yeah, his, his sister is my mum's best friend. So his sister is married to Dave McCauley. Mm, Lorraine. Yeah, yeah, so, mate, if you want to know anything about fishing, Scotty is like the... Biggest sea, uh, sea dog. I'll tell you a story. Like we were, I was fishing with Scotty once, and like fishing, it's all he does. And yeah. like it, he's that sort of bloke. He lives in Savannah. He's lived there since I don't know how old he was. Ex cray fisherman. But if you want to target a species, and I, look, these these guys are all the way up the coast in different towns and that sort of stuff, and they're the blokes that you need to pick their brain. But if you go to him and say, "Oh, where can we get yellowtail kingfish?" He'll go. I'll take you to the spot, you know? Or if you say, where can we get sambos? Here. Like, where are the jewies biting at the moment? Just can, an old Where can fight. we get whiting? Yeah. You know, like, where can we get Taylor? Like, squid. Like, he he knows, like, not just his... Like, a lot of people will go, oh, I can take you and get jewies. He'll be able to get you onto everything. Like, if you want to go hunting or something inland, he knows where everything is. Like, every square inch of the place. Just lives for it. Lives for Proper it. And, core. like, he's competitive and, and, like, I love fishing with him. And we went fishing this one time on my old boat. It was a small... I used to have a polycraft. It was six metres. They're those plastic... Plastic boats. It was a wicked boat. boat. Yeah, they are good boats. It, they go so good. You come out on it once. Yeah, yeah. they go sick. And we were heading out and it was... So we'd fished the morning before for inshore snapper because it was, like, blowing its ass off. And we struggled. Um, and then the next day was meant to be good weather. So we headed out for some jewies and was like, all right, we're keen. We get up early. It's like daybreak. Heading out the pass, south passage there. 
and it was probably blowing like 25 knots and maybe a two meter swell two and a half meter swell and it was fucking sketchy and mm. i was like heading out i'm driving he's sort of just standing on my back shoulder we're getting soaking wet and that and scotty this is how keen he is i was like about to turn around and say scotty fuck it let's just go in you know like and i was i was about to open my mouth and he goes take a look around and i sort of look at him and he goes no one else out here he goes what do you say he goes he goes no boys out here just men he goes he goes this is this is when god comes into play this is when we this is when we get rewarded for all the hard work we did yesterday. We'll find the fish first drop. I bet you we're going to catch the fish. And I'd sit, I was sitting there and I was like, "Fuck, imagine if he'd said that 10 sec or like if he didn't get the chance to say it." And I opened my mouth and said, "What do you mean, Scotty?" He would have gone when you look up to someone like oh, that. Like, he would have gone, "This little bitch." <laughs> he would have gone, gone, "Yeah, all right." And then I just would have gone down about three pegs in his book, but I felt like the, it was like a footy rev up half time speech, yeah, you know, yeah. like when the coach, coach comes in. And anyway, so we persisted, and luckily, like first spot, we did get him. But oh man, no boys out here, just men. I just that, never forget that. I was like, I was so close to being that that bloke. But. That must be in his blood too, because about uh, probably three months ago, his nephew Jack, I've grown up with him my whole life, and we went out on his sister's jet ski off North Point in Gracetown, and. Yep. It's not known as the uh, least sharkiest place yeah. in WA. <laughs> and fuck, man, like, he was just a madman. Like, I'd just done my dive course, so I'd learnt, like, the proper proper safety and, like, breathe-up techniques. Yeah, that goes out, out of the that goes out It the goes window. out the door, especially with Jack, too. Like, I'm going to send this to him after. He'll have a good laugh. But he was diving, like, he'd have, like, a minute and a half breath hold. He'd come up for, like, 20 seconds, not even get his breath back, and back down again, just, like, hunting craze. And we were at this spot. I was just like, man, there's nothing here. And he just would not stop, like... Def- like wouldn't be defeated yeah no that's 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 definitely in the bloodlines yeah. i reckon yeah yeah he's hey, a he's a funny man speaking of um something you just said when you you were t- started telling us that was that um you know he knows the spots he'll tell you where to go i was talking to pablo about this last week like what's the etiquette because i feel i'm on the fishing groups and stuff on facebook and the most common thing you see is crew just going where's a good spot to catch this and where's a good spot to catch that well, I don't, say, I don't think that. there's any issues with somebody asking. No. no. But you just give them a general area and what to look for, and then they put the effort in themselves. Like if somebody said, I want to go and target Jewfish off the beach. Mm. Like, general knowledge is you go to S Bend. Yeah. You go to S Bend, you take a drone or, or whatever you're doing, casting even, put in the groundwork, and I would explain to them, like, we get customers coming every day. How do I do this? Where do I go for that? Mm. And you say to them, look, if you want to target Jewfish off the beach, there's other places you can catch Jewies off the beach, but one of the best places to go where has caught the most, maybe because the most amount of people fish there, who knows, is S Bend. So I'd say, go to S Bend, use a drone, drop a bait out, set your rig like this, use your Google Earth, have a look at the ground structure, you know, find somewhere where you can see like a blue hole, bit of reef, rah, 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 whatever, and you give them, and that you've got to figure it out for yourself. Mm. So saying that, like I, how I said, Scotty will tell you, like, he, he won't tell you, but yeah. <laughs> he, won't he might tell me. Yeah. Yeah. He'll tell you, but he won't tell Tyrone. You know, mm. like he's, <laughs> if Tyrone goes there and says, "Hey, where can I get yellowtail kingfish?" He'll give him coordinates that are twenty k's inland. <laughs> but <laughs> he, he, but you, you have to figure it out. But generally, if there's a story and or rumor going around, like oh, someone caught a Jewy lamb base, like it, pr- there's a bit of truth behind a lot of the stuff. But like Pablo said, you have to put in the time yourself. Those yeah. fish finder books. Have you have you ever read those fish finder books? Yeah. They've got maps of pretty much the whole coast. Yeah, they do. And they'll tell you what well, species. Well, they like an old old book. They're like an what? encyclopedia. Yeah, yeah they do right. one for like inshore, like trout fishing and that as well. They're they're yeah, pretty okay. good. Just to it's like, and it's got towns, and it will say, you know, Jewies, whatever, and in different locations. There's a lot of coordinates and stuff on there as well. Yeah, right. But blowing out spots. But yeah, yeah. yeah. but well, they're well known. Well known but yeah. it's more like you know, well, that's you, what you ask me. Is too really, isn't it? It's yeah, exactly. Like a pretty well known. Yeah, spot. but you said to me, what, what do I do? I want to do if I want to target snapper? Mm. You want to find the back of the reef. That amount of time he told you where to. What doesn't matter where you are yeah. on WA coast. Just find that area and look for that. Mm. It's like the what is it? The D nine in the Coburn Sound. 
Everyone goes there. It's everyone goes there, but the fish rock up there, so it's a matter of timing as well. So if you want to, if if there are popular spots, like they're popular for a reason, there's fish there. Yeah. Mm. So it's like telling someone, well, "Where can I catch squid?" You tell them go Coban Sound in yeah. the weed, mm. five meters of water. Mm. You're not really, like, and I've got no issues with some people asking. Like I'm on the Facebook groups as well and etiquette, and you know, you're like you just got to help people out. Like they're yeah, out that's what I, I reckon too. Like not giving them the exact. You're not place. sending them a coordinate. Yeah. You know what no. the big thing is though? It's generally the fact is someone else has given them that spot yeah so by giving that spot to the next bloke you're dogging the bloke that gave you that spot yeah or took exactly you to that spot someone initially. takes you to a spot you're not going to take your mate and it's yeah and by doing him. that you lose the confidence of the last bloke so then yeah. he's not going to take you to his next spot exactly you're right though google earth is such a good tool like that's kind of how i've found the few spots that i've got especially, especially for land earth base too. like it's yeah. so good for land base yeah and the best thing is going there on like a cold winter morning if we're talking taylor or whatever like a couple of my spots is going there and there's no one else around yeah it's so good that's the thing like you, you'll you'll fish what early morning for taylor yeah not a lot of people Tyrone doesn't want to get out of bed at that time that's why what do you mean I'm scared at 4am this morning <laughs> that's because you got a fish pro and a snapper out so but you, would you do it for Taylor no like, fuck no exactly <laughs> so do you know what I mean there's small communities Funny and groups that will do fish it. for Taylor nah mate I, Taylor, actually love, I love fish Taylor's Taylor. one of my favourite species yeah, yeah I, really I love fish like too. light tackle like Cast even the, the beach rods, table. mate. Even the big twelve footers. That's how I grew up fishing. It was beach, and yeah, know, but it's not fun. It is fun. It is fun. Mate, they smash it off. It is there. still fun on a twelve footer. Nah, I'm, 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 like mate, a, don't be a gear snob. It's, I'm not. I'm just saying, <laughs> yeah, like, it is fun. I'll use a hundred or nine foot shot. combo. No, yeah, Dude, well, that's funner. But sitting, but uh, you you got to remember it's as well. experience. No, well, it's people go fishing, and I'm sure you go fishing a lot. You've had a shit week at work. You've mm. worked nine to five and hard, hard, part of the thing is you just want to go sit down on the beach and drink piss mm. and if you catch a couple of fish, it's a bonus. So if you've got a 12 it's footer... It's the experience. It's, it part of, it's, full, it's, it's the journey. It's not just like, like, like... It sounds so it's cheesy, unwinding. but it's the journey. Yeah, there. now like, that makes and sense. And even like, I, I was actually, this is going to sound so lame, but I was bitching to my mum about how shit of a fucking <laughs> weekend I had that weekend <laughs> I was away go. And she made me realise something that I already knew. It was like, it's, you fucking learn. Like, take spare rod next time. Like, you know well, what I mean? It's just we, things like that that you learn along the line. <laughs> Don't it's all experience, line. you know what I mean? We, so. we have customers that go to, like, Oman, pre-COVID. Or, yeah, that'd be sick. You know, chasing GTs. And one of the things I tell them is to take a stick. Like, the trips will cost them 10 grand. So yeah, they're already spending a lot of money. Grand trip, exactly. And I have customers that have gone and broken a rod first cast mm. from a tip wrap or whatever it may be. It's gotten fractured in transport. And like I tell them, take a stick baiting rod, a popping rod and a combo rod. Yeah. That way, if you break a rod, you have another rod. Mm. Because there's nothing worse than the being down a road where you need another one. that so many times. But it happens. Like, but even going anywhere. Like, go to Exmouth for, like, a weekend. Or, not a weekend, but, like, go to Exmouth for a week. And if you break a rod on your second day and you got nothing else, then you're buying a rod at Exmouth Tackle Store, you know, and, you, yeah. or you got to, and they might not have what you want, or you're going to get it shipped up, and you're losing three or four days of fishing. Yeah, exactly. But that's the thing, how I was talking before, it's like, you can sit there and you can say jigs you can say lures you can say all this sort of stuff but that's a good thing about fishing it's like you can do it if you want but a lot of the time people just want to go and just fucking relax and do yeah, something and it's an yeah. excuse to get out so like I don't I love fishing I love fishing bait I love fishing plastics I love fishing jigs like it doesn't actually matter what you're doing it's just the fact that if you're getting out there and having a crack it's experience. It's, it's an experience thing. And it's yeah. a wind down thing. Or it can be just fucking get 10 minutes to yourself by going down to the beach and, you know, flicking soaking lures. a bait or flicking Yeah, you're lures. not thinking about work or any nah, other shit. Fucking, and that's why I love beach fishing. Because, you know, you take a feed down there and yeah. your kids can run up and down the beach or whatever. If you don't have kids, then you look at the bloke who's got his kids next to you and you go, fuck your kids off. <laughs> <laughs> how, how often do you go beach fishing? And you're down there and the bloke's dog is fucking running around your thing. You're yeah, like, eating your Get your dog shit. out of here, you know? Like, I just want to kick the bloke's dog that comes running up to me. Yeah. Sniffing around. And the, and the dog owners are... Like, I've got a dog, but dog owners are always like, oh, how, like, oh they love what are you dog. sniffing? Yeah, you're Come like, here, Freddy. Just dog off, you know? And they're barking. And, and they're splashing around in the shallows where you're trying to fish. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah, it's it's true, but no, nah, the experience is is part of it, and that's like with salmon fishing, like like we'll, we've been busy this last week, two weeks, and we haven't been busy with people that are coming to the store, knowing what they're doing, buying the stuff that they always buy, like that. We've been busy with people this time of the year. It's every year this time of the year, 
people coming to the store and they're buying stuff because they don't normally fish. They got no idea. Well, you were in before a guy came in. They got no idea what they're doing, but they're going away with the family and they want to go catch fish. Yeah. They want to give it a go. And it's experience. Like that. And that is this time of the year, every year. And out of those, you know, people that you sell tackle to that are doing it only this time of the year, you will get 10 or 15% back that have enjoyed it and they'll continue to fish. Yeah. And that's just the, the time. And it's true. It's, and it's because it's the, it's the experience thing, you know? With the, yeah. with the families or whatever whatever you're doing. Have you got a salmon before? Yeah. Yeah, I actually had a really good year with salmon last year before they locked down. Um, down south? Yeah, just down in Dunsborough. I go down there a bit for work, obviously, with all the surf shops down there in my line of work. So just after work, I make sure I've always got the rods there. But, man, that whole stretch is just... I think people, too, think that salmon is a... Obviously, the schools migrate at a certain time of year, but salmon are a fish that you can catch all year round I've found like I caught one at Christmas time like just when down, we're down south there. Yeah. yeah 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 just down, yeah. down well there's there. residents off Perth too yeah yeah like but just soaking a bait I mean it's probably going to be a little bit hard to catch them with a with a lure at certain times yeah year, but like soaking a bait down there mate it's, it's, um, the, so what lures do you use for salmon just the same t- as tailor lures like I don't have a specific salmon setup do you so, ever, ever use plastics no nah. No. So there's guys, I won't give away the spot, I might give it away to you later, but there's guys that clean up on the salmon. There's a little spot, Metro, and it's like this little tiny stretch of reef. Oh, yeah, just the tr- like salmon trout and that. No, like proper proper, proper, proper salmon, when they migrate. Yeah, right. and, that, and they do get resident ones, but they use plastics, probably not that big, but they're seven-inch seven, seven inch plastics, inch. and they use the white, like no, no jig head, no weight, and they basically cast them out and... You can't cast them out that far. I've fished the same spots and I've cast stick baits out and that. And I yeah, because un- an unweighted plastic, you can't cast it You far. can't cast it mm. far. And they're using little rods and that and they're casting them out. And I'm like, what are they doing? You know, like casting these plastics. What? Like, why? And I went back down there with the kids and I cast out just a whiting rig and would have caught 30 of those small sand whiting that, like, basically were like that. And I was just like, well... Like 20 centimetres long Yeah, tw- like... Yeah, half a, half a dick length long. And <laughs> that's, a, that's a dick you're talking <laughs> about, bro. Right? We're talking about him. Yeah, but, Jesus. Sorry, that's laugh. a big fish. Uh, um, but, and, and I was, because I'd always wondered, I was always like, what, what are they doing? And it was just like, it clicked. And that's the same thing with fishing. Like, if you are new to it, that sort of stuff, you find the bait and, you find and then you can match the bait. And, and I'd never thought like, oh, shit, that's whiting. You know, and they and I've seen guys pull in heaps of salmon mm. and big tailor in these spots, and it was like, I'd rather why no jig head? Why no, yeah, well, yeah, for a feed you That'd probably feed. would, but um, and it, yeah, it was, I'm, I, you know, for salmon that just sort of clicked to me. So I've I have I have cast them around, and I haven't actually done any well with the with the soft plastics, but the, you see old dudes and that that must know the area so well, and they yeah. would have known what they were doing exactly, you know, but I had no idea. Mm. Come. Can, Pick the brain of one of those old fellas, or like one of the old chiefs. That Scotty knows, Watson, yeah. old yeah. Scotties, yeah, the old sea dogs. The old Scotties. Yeah, like I'm, I'm fishing at the, like I met a, become good mates with him. I met Austin, you know Austin. Yeah, like no, down, Austin, down yeah. at my tailor spot, and he's fished there for ages. But we he's just a good come, fisherman. Yeah, he is, man. And he's only twenty. And yeah. Like, fuck, man, I got a bit of faith in him this year. Like he's gone, I'll get you on a good pink this year. But he, fuck, man, he caught that many last year, and he, I, I don't care who. How old you are, I don't care if you're a man, you're a woman, well, look whatever. At Finn. Like, Finn's young as. He catches so many good Finn that works for us. Yeah, if you can just so pick many the good brain of someone that knows what they're talking about. And that goes back to my question before, like etiquette. Like it comes across as, you know, how do you ask a question and what kind of question do you ask? Like if I was to say to Austin, oh, where'd you catch that fish? He's probably not going to tell me. No, if you I said, I how would I like, go about targeting that what, fish? You know, yeah, like even, even like what lure do you use? Like you don't what weather you're looking for what moon phase what tide you're looking for like that's played yeah. a huge part in me actually coming home like a lot of the time now with a fish you know what i mean it's true like you never ask never flat out ask for a spot no, i feel like guys like are more willing point. to give up that other information like you know like moon well, set or moon rise or all that sort of stuff you know yeah, tides. i feel like you you'll get that broader information it's the location guys are reluctant yeah no one wants to give away locations well, especially too like these dudes that have finding these spots on their own accord they're like looking at google maps they're going there when it's windy they're going there when it's offshore kind of like chasing up. chasing Mulloway at wago yeah yeah do it doing that ground <laughs> you must be doing you something don't... right though because the guy old mates come in and just pulled a 1.2 out of his spot 
he probably that, said, know, he probably calls I'm, it Jake's religi- spot yeah. as well, or Friday or whatever, you know? Like, I'm not a religious <laughs> man, but snapper. I don't think the man above liked me that That's day. I must have done something wrong. Uh, I don't know, I must have said a swear word. My, uh, <laughs> my way go experience is we went there with Josh Kennedy years ago. He's, is he from up that way? He's Northampton Joe? boy, and he knew the owner. Oh, yeah. I think the guy's name's Ash, it might be Ash McClintock, if my memory's good. It was 10 years ago now, and we, me, him, and Bo Waters went up there, and um, you know we caught Taylor, Pinkies, all that sort of stuff throughout the day, and then JK was like, um, old mate Ash is coming down here tonight. And he's going to take us to his Mulloway hole. And I was like, it sounds pretty good to me. And It's not exactly an easy fish to catch. N- well, we hadn't got any. And then um, he strolled down, whatever, and he's just parked us up. And we basically started fishing. And he didn't even cast his rod out at the beginning. We were like, hey, what are you doing? And he's like, oh, I forget what it was. But he's like, oh, as soon as it gets dark, that's when I'll cast it out or whatever. Yeah. And no shit, but he strolled out with his rod cast it out and within like half an hour i reckon we had six mile away on the beach and wow. it was like this guy just knew that it. makes me feel so good yeah <laughs> <laughs> and we actually we actually put a stake in it like when he when he drove off like we put a stake in like a bit of wood so smart so we knew <laughs> where to come back the next night it was like, <laughs> so the stake's actually probably still there if you're driving Typical up the beach market and spoon fed spots all the time <laughs> <laughs> mate six mile away i'm not complaining you know that wasn't too bad that's yeah that's why i go for you boys it's a different a Jake story. Yeah. So how long have you been Salty Crew for? So I've well, been working for my old agencies. man. So my dad owns, a, just to give a bit of context, I guess, um, my old man's been in the surf and skate industry for like 25 years or something. Yep. It, actually more, because I'm 25. In the box. He's been, yeah, he's been uh, in the industry as longer than I've been born so like probably 20 forever 20, yeah like he's doing like, mainly surf brands eh? yeah a bit of an OG so he worked for his uh, he worked for his dad in the toy industry like and baby products and stuff or like like uh, prams and I think they were the reps for it was a big toy brand I think it was maybe like Fisher Price or so something like, a, like a major brand yeah yeah, yeah. and they were kind of like uh, dad dad worked for him like I do for my dad and um because you guys he, do a shitload of brands. We do. You're quite, yeah, we are a big You guys do like, I went, I went there and like obviously you showed us the new range of Soldier Crew stuff and we only stocked stock, Soldier Crew off you. Yeah. And um, you guys had fucking everything. Yeah. But I didn't even realise they were all linked. It's a cool word. Well, they are. Yeah, yeah. sick. Yeah, like we can't, we moved up to that space probably. I'm good, man. I still got a little bit of... Oh, that's right. ...in there, but I'll crack into that in a bit. Um, we moved there in 2017 just after I started working for my old man, but... Um, I got involved with the business. I just come back from a year trip in Canada. I just kind of went and did the. Yeah, I've stalked your life. Facebook. I've seen your photos. They look pretty cool. Yeah, dude, if you ever get the chance to go to Canada, go. It's fucking sick, especially for fishing too. Like I didn't realise until I actually got home and started like really having a keen interest in fishing. But that joint is sick, man. It's so good. If I get the chance to go back there anytime soon, I'm going for sure. But anyway, got back from Canada, and. Um, Dad worked for DC for 20 years or something. In the shoes. shoes. Yeah. yeah. So, um, Sick of DC, shoes growing up. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> like big chubby shoes. No, yeah. Big chubby shoes. Them and custom. So um, DC went in-house. So basically they didn't want to go the agency route where they're paying someone a commission to, yeah, they went to, to sell like their product. Or yeah. They just, way, yeah, yeah, to salary. So basically in-house. And um, he got a call while I was working on a, I got back and just, I'd worked on for concreters and for concrete pumps and just stuff. Just in, yeah, just in shit. between. And um, I was into my skating, like always have been and actually shoot like a lot of the best skaters in Perth. So he, he got a call from Globe, another shoe brand, which is, Globe's the overarching brand, but they've got parts of their company, which is, hardcore distribution which is like all skate product there's like 30 skate brands under there that we distribute through the whole of australia between all of us reps and then they just signed on this new brand um salty crew that dad brought me into the business to kind of be the one that sold the skate stuff because he, he's not a skater yeah my cousin okay. that works with us isn't a skater um and they just had this new brand that was kind of just at its infancy it was big in kind of growing like it is now in um in the u.s 
and um, yeah, I was in there for the for the skate side of things, and we we went to a couple of sales meetings and heard about this brand. And di- man, to be honest, if I'm totally honest, I didn't think it was really going to take off like it has. But in the four years that we've been working with Salty Crew, um, it's just man, it's becoming a pretty pretty big part of our business for you sure. You make and cool I'm, stuff. It's not like your basic bitch. Fucking sublimated, long sleeve tea. I won't mention any brands, but, but it I doesn't can't stand. Look, it. Don't look like an. I'll NASCAR mention. There's like driver. memes about them. But yeah. you don't wear them. No, nah, man. And well, there's you guys never do been cool any stuff. Crossover. Yeah. There's never been that crossover brand of <laughs> lifestyle and fishing. You know? that, yeah. That's yeah. what it is. You can wear the shirts now. The there is now too. It's worth mentioning that it, there is now. There's a lot of them, but they're not the OGs. They're not the ones nah. that like. Man, there's a like. I don't know the the backstory of that salty life brand but i can tell you for sure like hacking nothing on them like but salty crew was around before that you know and there's even other brands in the surf industry now that are creating um fishing style fishing style stuff and it's just kind of well, it doesn't work huge, like worldwide fishing's pretty big yeah so and i think the big part of salty crew too is it's run by fishermen and it's run by surfers and that's where the name comes from is salty crew like it's a crew of dudes that have just spent their whole lives in southern california fishing and surfing and when the wind's in and they can't fish or surf they're building boats with their old mans or you yeah know, doing the with their stuff. mates or whatever so it was founded by a guy um i was actually doing my research just so i didn't butcher this because i thought you'd ask before i before i came here but it was founded by a guy named jared lane um I actually had the opportunity to meet him when we went for a sales meeting in Fiji um, probably two years ago, and he's a rad cat. Is he a young lad? or? Yeah, he's young. He's got a family. I think he's got like two or three kids or something. Um, I only chatted to him briefly. I don't really know him on a personal level, but um, just kind of started making T-shirts for his mates. So I don't know if you guys follow a guy on Instagram. His name's Dwayne Diego. Yeah, he, I follow him on the work page. Dude, he's loose. Like some of the fish that he catches yeah. off the Southern California coast like big southern bluefin like butterballs man like you couldn't hug them if you tried that's sort of his crew so yeah sick just making t-shirts and hats and that's the thing like it's cool they're cool logos it's just a cool brand really yeah yeah so we actually had a customer like that we bought on recently so it's kind of like the yeti of of fishing clothing like their marketing in that sense is yeah it's good marketing i see it everywhere yeah, and I think that plays a big part in the growth of the brand too. Like it's it's just rad. Like when they go out and do their trips and stuff, they're they're making videos. Like if anyone wants to check out the videos, they're on YouTube just under the salty life. Uh, salty life. Oh, don't no, hang on a second. <laughs> <laughs> <It's a late laughs> We're definitely under, not going to play under the salty crew uh, YouTube channel, and that'll probably give you a good vibe as, as to what the brand is. And um, yeah, I think just over here, especially in WA, like, I think. The survey that um, Wreckfish did recently, it was like a third of the population in WA fish or something. Yeah, so yeah. It's a perfect... Um, so it relates, brand. doesn't yeah, it? It, it sur- definitely Especially relates, with the surfing sure. and the lifestyle sure. around like, the ocean. Well, we've got an ocean there, lifestyle, like, really. we got spread out our city as everyone wants to live on the water. Yeah, exactly. It's just one big, long strip along yeah, the coast, correct. really. But, um, like, for me personally, man, like i I got a lot of hobbies, and of course you want to... With, even if you don't realise it, you're going to gravitate towards brands and products that kind of represent your lifestyle. I can't ever see myself in a Shimano shirt with you know all the logo or a fish bass tournament. Any shirt or sublimated, you know what I mean? Like, sublimated tea. Yeah, it's just not not my vibe, and it, and it looks cool. And to be honest, it's functional as well. Mm. Like you look at the shorts that they do; they got like really hard wearing plier pockets. And, yeah, we got them in stock. They're sick, sick yeah, shorts. Deep sea short, so. That's like, got, I take two of those when I go camping and it's the only short I really wear, so. You don't have any on, mate? No, nah, I don't. <laughs> Just wearing some denimies. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, it's a rad brand. They won't give me any freebies. <laughs> but they kind, they kind of grew to a point where like like any brand, when you just see this growth that's just on an upward scale, like you kind of need investors. It's a cool so brand. So that, that's how Globe got involved with it and Globe's kind of the perfect Took it to the next company, level. yeah, they took, they did take it to the next level just with the funding and also like the logistic part of it as well. They've got um, warehousing in LA, Europe, and, and Australia as well. So the Hill Brothers that run Globe, like they're skaters that started a footwear brand and they did it from you know their house and they did it in this small operation and it just exploded and grew into this rad thing. And they're still majority like Globe's on the stock market, 
but they're still majority owners in the company. So it's never going to stray too far away from what it originally was. And that's kind of when a brand falls off the map is when it's not, it's origi- it falls away from its original vision. You yeah. know what I mean? So they kind of understood what Jared was trying to do and thought, yeah, this is sick. Let's get behind it. So that's how kind of we got involved with Salty Crew just through the globe guys repping for them so i love sick. it and what happened to your footy career mate so you got a brother that plays at west coast where's your <laughs> yeah. uh, man i guess that question a bit eh? did like, you ever I'm, did you not were you not interested no, or I did play, you play a bit footy, or what yeah i kind of did a bit of everything eh? so you I'm, did a bit of boxing was he too, was yeah, he boxing's kind of like my main hobby now like is that because he used to bash you growing up or we're, nah, putting, we're, no, putting, no, on, <laughs> we're putting on bets for uh for jake and um mark's punch on Boxing, we're gonna take bets. Oh, we're gonna. Oh, we? oh, I'd love to. Have a little wrestle, bro. I have to get only if we can oil each other up. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> no, what happened with your footy? So, like, play, where did you, where did you go to? Now, How so high, I, higher level? Or? I, oh, I didn't play a higher level at all. Like the other two brothers are kind of get, my other brother Sam, who's between me and Josh. He's quite a good footy player. Yeah. He plays West Perth League, and um, I kind of was just more interested in surfing and skating, man, to be honest. Like, I played up until I was 17. Did a couple of years of rugby as well at North Beach. Yep. Um, but, yeah, I, I got to high school, man, and kind of fell in love with the whole boxing and jiu-jitsu thing. So that's kind of what I've been doing the last probably 10 years now, on and off. But um, You're not training had, had a mean left boot. Left like, footer? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah. <laughs> Mate, left footers always gives you but that extra 10, way, 20%, man, I, I reckon. I like you're always the... Uh, I wasn't getting the chocolate very often after every every game. The really? Really? Was not. Nah. Oh, definitely wasn't the best. What, where, what position you play? Uh, back line. Looks like I was like a half flank, kind of like Josh. Like yeah. Just half flank was where I ended up a lot of the time. I always wanted to be in the middle because that was where Bit of the, the best guys. Played. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Never could really. Come Forward line's where the best way. guys played, mate. Don't worry about that. Who did you play? Forward line. <laughs> well, man, I, of course you'd say that. that makes sense. <laughs> Mate, on my theory was everyone got drafted as a forward. If they couldn't play forward, they put him in the midfield. If they can't play midfield, they put him in the back line. Then it's the bench, then you're dropped. There you go. So it's like, it's hard I'll to make, find I'll forwards. make sure Josh listens to yeah, this. Yeah, he's, yeah, been, mate, he's been he's, playing back pockets. Well, so yeah, 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 mate, you better hang on because it's next is the bench and then you're out. Nah, he's, he's been doing well. I'm super proud of him. I, I kind of always knew he'd, he'd make it somehow, but... What did you think of the game on the weekend? I mean, he gave a couple of... Yeah. I only watched the last quarter. He gave a couple of goals away, which ultimately... Oh, it was a tough one. It was actually no, a no, cracking no. game. Like the Bulldogs, it was. It sort of went back and forth a fair bit. There was a lot of lead changes and then there was just opportunity. It comes down to opportunity in those games and West Coast didn't really take a few that probably would have put them... Made, like would have put them, you know, mm. out in front and made it just that little bit too hard. And then when... Bulldogs are a side when they get momentum they're hard to stop in the late last quarter mm. it's disappointing though because I reckon they're the games that sort of determine can determine top four finishes later in the year like West Coast have dropped a few of them games in the past two years and it's cost them top four spots because there are other games that you probably drop throughout the year that you shouldn't so yeah. if you can win those 50-50 ones I reckon it's big but it's round two as well at the same time then it doesn't take much to get a roll on so be interesting to see where they sit, eh? See how we go. I hope Josh gets some more games, but there's some good players that are chasing his tail. Yeah, I mean, he's looking pretty set now. He's always going to break into that side, I reckon. He, he's got some of those attributes that a lot of players don't, you know. He can yeah, play man, multiple pretty, positions. He's pretty focused too. Like, I'll hit him up on the weekend, I have a beer or whatever, and he's like, no, you can come around, I'll have a water and a beer. But like, it's just, just the little things he does. Yeah. Oh, you could tell he was always focused. fully committed. Some guys t- come through the doors and they're sort of not... Man, it's been that way since he was like 15. Well, thanks for coming, uh, Jake. It was... <laughs> yeah, sure, so actually, no, no, we can't. We've got to end with uh, <laughs> talking about the that. selfie stick that Pablo's bought. I think he's bought that. So he's bought this... Um, we've all seen Tyrone's videos that he does of himself and I think he's bought this video so that he can film himself doing exactly what we were just talking about. <laughs> <laughs> you're going to start an OnlyFans. So it's a... <laughs> get, a look, get, like, get a look at this, like, to be honest. He's bought it's, this, this selfie, selfie ring. Like, it's I a don't selfie understand. ring. There's nothing wrong with it. With a, with a, a mood light on it. It's got three different settings. You can with a, with a tripod. Yeah, so correct. So I'm assuming we're not going to use this footage, but... So it can hold my phone. Mate, no... 
shit if I walked in and I'm going to text you, Josh right now. And saw you <laughs> and saw you talking into that. There's nothing wrong with it. I would not shop here again. Uh, if mate, I was a customer. Know, but I, I bring out the light in your eyes. I've got to say that it's great. I saw a video of you before as well with it and your forehead looked that shiny. So you're going to start dusting up the makeup? I might or have what? to. We might get a makeup person in here to give me a thing. All right. <laughs> well, we've almost done an hour, so that's our longest longest podcast. What about um, tomorrow night? What, don't you want to talk about yeah, that? Or actually, will this be out before? This will uh, be out after. After, mm. yeah. So we'll, be, we'll talk about that on the next... Because we spoke about that last week. So we'll talk about that on the next one. Salmon night. Yeah, salmon, salmon night tomorrow night. So this Jake's is Tuesday coming. night. Jake will be here for salmon night. So we're going to have a bit of a crowd here. So it's going to be perfect to bring up that story again that we just spoke about with Jake. With perfect. The, uh, perfect. Oh, I can't, I can't be much worse than that. <laughs> <laughs> Mate, it's good to get these stories out while the uh, podcast is still in its infancy. And we've only out. got about 30 people <laughs> listening. Yeah, right. so they almost got it stopped without the self ring coming out. Oh. <laughs> yeah. So we'll see you again tomorrow night. Thanks for showing up again, man. Thanks for all the, the gear and everything you guys do for us. We appreciate it. And uh, yeah, we'll get you back in another time soon. Sick. Cheers, bro. I have more fish stories and maybe a mully Definitely. Mully story to when you, you get that mully, we're getting you in. Yes. Yeah, Cheers, Cheers, man.